to another episode of Media Watch. I'm your host, Doc Savvy, and this time around, I've got a new microphone rather than the, rather than the previous one. Um, we're still working our way through the books, and I have to crack a joke about my books every week. This is Media Watch. I'm your host uh, to bring you fantastic guests every week and some cutting-edge subjects. Uh, and without further ado, let me introduce to you my guests this time around. I've got Captain Ramit Kaur, uh, an honour to be uh, with you on this program. Appreciate it very much in terms of your time. Uh, we also got uh, Mr. Rajvinder Singh uh, from the Shepherds Bush Gurdwara. Wonderful to meet you. Uh, we had a nice chat earlier on. And also Mukesh Malhotra, a good friend of mine who's doing some amazing work at the moment. He's um, uh, one of those guys who always finds fantastic charity projects. Uh, the Roll Out the Barrel, he's uh, uh, has been uh, the Deputy Mayor of Hounslow. Uh, he's also been a person who's been at Rotary for a while, and his latest venture is looking at cooperatives, which are banks. Now, we first met Ramneet actually way back uh, about 12 weeks ago, just when the lockdown down situation was going on. Uh, and that was about feeding people um, effectively in a, a food bank or an outreach project from the Gurdwara from Shepherds Bush. And we were with Gupri and then Mukeshi and Gupri and uh, you all worked together um, actually on the committee. I'm talking about uh, Rajvinder as well as uh, uh, Captain Ramnik. Now, uh, one of the subjects I thought would be interesting to look at after 12 weeks, which is effectively three or four months, and as the lockdown loosens up, is uh, poverty, homelessness doesn't go away. People still suffering. Um, and even though people are off the streets, maybe in hotels or finding accommodation, as soon as lockdown freezes in terms of comes off, uh, people still find that they've got issues uh, and they need to be managed and helped. Um, so I'd like to talk about three things today. The first one really is about well-being, um, because all of this has affected people's lives. I'm not sure I'm that trustworthy about what happens actually in businesses when it comes down to um, admitting you need uh, um, some help. Uh, and so maybe there's a role there. Um, the second thing really is to talk about, although people need food, they also need money. Uh, to do other things like pay their mortgages or uh, actually resettle, especially as we find lots of people are in a furlong situation. And maybe in the next few months, what might happen is people will start to be made redundant when companies cannot afford to pay or the government no longer is actually supplementing that. And the third thing really to talk about, and we've only got 24 minutes, uh, is to talk about um, what other programs are there at the Gurdwara, as we know, and I mentioned earlier, that the Gurdwara was doing some great work feeding thousands of people. Lots of uh, different institutions were doing this. SWAP was doing it, Casa Aid was doing it. Many people were doing it around um, the uh, the world to help people in need. A lot of them were Sikhs, um, and it was really good. Uh, I think even in Hausa, there were some groups that got together and did some work. So that problem doesn't go away. So let, let's start off first with um, Captain Ramnik. Captain Ramnik, welcome to the show. Waigi go Casa, Waigi Fateh. Um, tell us all about some of the stuff that you're doing on the well-being side, because I think the Gurdwara is leading the way there, aren't they? Waigajika Kasa, Waigajiki Fateh. Yes, I take great pride today to be talking about the initiative taken by Central Gurdwara Kasa Jata. Um, I think as we all, I mean, we all know we have a concept of Chardikala in, in, in our Sikhism, which means a state of positivity, which talks about well-being. We are also aware of the statistics and a lot of research being done in mental health aspect. And we know um, in one of the research which I read, it was like um, 2014 adult psychiatric morbidity survey, survey, which highlights one in six person will experience a me common mental health um, issues. And one in five person talks about taking their own life. Now, these are very alarming statistics that we have that we are facing, okay? We all, we know that we all have mental health, but not necessarily, we all live with good mental health. And a very classic example is, for example, I know at some point of in, in the day, week, year, there will be bright sunshine and I need sunglasses. I don't wait for the sunshine to come out for me to go buy myself sunglasses. You know, I know there'll be cold some, at some point. I would need a different kind of clothing. I don't wait for that cold to come over before I go by, by myself appropriate clothing. 
So when we know the mental health is part of our life, just like physical health, why do we have to wait for something to crash, for something to break, before we will start talking about it? And I think we as a Gurdwara committee, we realized there is a gap here. Something needs to be done. And Gurdwaras have a much bigger role to play. We have to extend ourselves to the Sangat, the requirement of the society, what is happening in the society, how the societal pressures, psychological factors, all of that is affecting, because in the end, that is our Sangat that we are talking about. It is me I am talking about. It is you I'm talking about. So the initiative... We had a lot of discussion around it. There was ongoing conversations. We had meetings. What can be done? And we finally agreed that something has to be done. What is the starting point? I think that was the conversation. Then we started, okay, let's start with a research which will provide us with some qualitative and quantitative data. Okay. I know there's a lot of research done um, you know, by Mental Health Foundation and lots of other organizations, very reliable organizations, which provide the statistics. Okay. There is Thrive London program project by Mayor of London, very effective. But having said that, we do not have any starting point to see what is the mental health state or what is the qualitative data when we're looking at the Sikh community. And now I'm not talking about somebody, somebody done like in you know, a 50 surveys or 60 surveys. Is there a proper survey that has been created by psychologists and, and qualified people to ascertain and understand what is the current state? Okay. Um, I'm a qualified teacher. I've been teaching for almost like 21 plus years. Um, I know I don't show it, but... Um, you definitely don't but, show it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I can tell you... Um, with my experience, we are finding more and more younger people experiencing mental health issues. And I'm talking of clinical depression. I'm talking of diagnosed mental health concerns here. So it is something that we do need to focus on. So the but research that we're going to talk about... I was going to interrupt you for a second. That, that Although the statistics may reveal the fact that there's a problem and there are issues, and that's the key point, cause and effect, right? So we can try and fix a problem, right? But going back to the root cause, is it money? Is it down to the fact that there are, yeah. you know, there are other issues in terms of relationships sometimes. Sometimes it can be bullying in the workplace, right? It can be a whole host of issues that bring that on board. And then also there are other things as well. There's clinical depression too, that people may be suffering from certain situations or, and we were talking about this earlier, maybe they've had a bad experience while growing up and that's had an influence on their particular behavior. So what we find is that there isn't a single cause, but that's not to say that we shouldn't do more work in this area. One of the big areas, um, just bring Mukesh in for a second, um, is around finance. People start to worry about the fact that they cannot afford or keep up with the Joneses or the, the Gills next door. Um, so that, that brings about uh, a certain amount of pressure as well, doesn't it? Mukesh. Yeah, okay. I just wasn't sure whether you were talking to me. Yeah, I think the important thing is um, that in our own society, uh, in the South Asian community, you know, there is a degree of keeping up with the Kapoors and the Kandas, etc. But I think uh, you've got to remember is that if you're living in West London at the moment, the big threat is that potentially there are 12 to 20,000 people whose jobs are on the line uh, at Heathrow Airport. Now, a lot of them will be saving, a lot of them will be living hand to mouth. The important thing is how many of them are, have actually prepared for a really bad situation where they could be unemployed for between three to six months while they try to find new jobs. The, the new world order uh, or the new normal might not necessarily allow them that flexibility. So when we talk about uh, a cooperative and the banking world, uh, I still have to have the same regulatory approval as Barclays Bank, and the guy for back, Barclays Bank might earn £15 million a year. As a cooperative bank, not the cooperative, but as a cooperative, we're volunteers, and we, ha we have assets of over a million pounds. We have members who contribute regularly, but the difference is, 
it's members lending to members. And that's the important thing. But once the lockdown started, we actually tried to retain a high degree of cash available to members in case they wanted to use it. But instead, what's happening over the past four months is most people have actually been clearing their debts, clearing down their loans. Now the worry for us, and like most other financial institutions, is going to be with the increase in the number of people who are coming out of furlough and their employers are saying, we can't afford to keep you, and they're being made redundant. That is the biggest worry for most families. And what we talked about mental health issues, we've been, we have regularly chats with credit unions across the country, and there are about 250 credit unions across the country, and many of them are facing the same situation. Uh, the government have said, uh, don't, um, don't uh, uh, help support people who may say, I can't afford to pay at the moment. So we've had to put into place plans like extending their line of credit. So instead of it finishing in a year's time, it, we say, okay, we'll let it run for a year and a half. But the pressure on the individuals, right, is there. And the biggest worry is what happens after being, after you come out of furlough. So uh, I think um, the, the issue is the increase in mental health issues uh, are fairly evident. And the various charity boards I sit on, and one of them is to do with disability, uh, we are already beginning to get inquiries about uh, mental health issues. Who can I talk to? Because the local authorities are getting rid of people as well. There's no point them signposting individuals to uh, go and see this person or go and see that person. The reality is those are things which the local authority in the past would have dealt with or that's absolutely the awesome, NHS actually, would have dealt with. I was just going to say to you, the classic classic point you're making there, because I was talking to um, uh, Captain uh, Ramneet before, and she actually said that to me as well. There were uh, have been cases where people really need help, and because there's been a rundown of services, uh, it's just sometimes maybe too late for them without mentioning too many cases. Let me just, uh, thank you for that, Mukesh. Let me just bring in... Uh, 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 Rajvinder in for a second. Rajvinder, now the Gawara ran programs uh, to, uh, and they still continue to do this, actually feed local groups. Uh, I know certain people that uh, are writing books at the moment about uh, the amazing work that the Gawara did uh, and uh, thousands of meals a day were served. Now you're going to continue with that program, but this also points to the fact that there is an opportunity here to think more strategically about different ways of helping people. Now, the DIY program, that is a bit of a tearjerker by the BBC, which goes into somebody's house and helps them out and does a few modifications. Um, or, you know, we know that there's a, a mental health issue. Um, maybe there could be a program that be could place uh, to help those individuals, maybe on a more confidential basis. What ideas have are you currently looking at where those kind of outreach services that include food but other areas as well and i think wouldn't it be great if you guys got together with uh, cooperative banks uh, to uh, help look at ways in which you could help people uh, from a financial perspective but indeed one of the positive things to come out of lockdown and the COVID situation we're in at the moment is better engagement with other third sector organizations local to the Gurdwara. so we as a we as a Gurdwara, and I think generally as a community, um, have not been very good with engaging with other non-Sikh uh, charities doing work locally. Um, the food poverty issue became quite acute with COVID, uh, with people in lockdown, people shielding. Uh, the whole nation became quite finely tuned to the need to provide food services. And so it occurred to us as a Gurdwara, given that we have a kitchen and we'd be making longer anyway, we'd like to continue doing that. And so we collaborated with local food banks to provide them meals uh, that started at 60, uh, 70 meals a day and upwards to 575 meals a day on average now delivered every day. And we've been doing that for the last three and a half uh, to four months. Um, and in engaging with local food banks and other third sector organizations, other charities locally, we realized that the issues that the local community face go beyond just food poverty. Um, we're in Kensington, Chelsea, which is one of the densest populated uh, boroughs uh, in London. Uh, it also has quite a, a, a large wealth gap between the more affluent parts of the boroughs uh, borough and, the, uh, and the less affluent in the north. Uh, and the Gurdwara straddles that boundary precisely. 
And uh, in addition to food poverty issue, a lot of people in the north uh, are furloughed at the moment. Uh, and also in terms of the youth and the elderly, they lack facilities locally that they can use to congregate and to actually uh, interact with each other on a social level. Um, and so one of the things we're exploring, in addition to continuing our food programme, is actually how we can engage better with our local community, non seat community, uh, and help provide facilities for them. Uh, we're looking at our education programme. Uh, one other thing we realise is that the local community, although they know we exist, uh, and they know where the Gurdwara building is, they don't actually know who we are. Uh, and so we'd like to improve uh, community relations and actually teach them about about Sikhism, because uh, actually a lot of what we do as Sikhs, a core part of uh, uh, of our beliefs and our principles, is, is serve our selfless service uh, to all those who need it. Uh, and there are many people in our local community that need it and have been using our services in one form or another, uh, even pre-lockdown, but perhaps didn't know how important a part of our, our religion that is. And certainly our local authority as well uh, wasn't fully cognizant of that, and we've been doing a lot of work uh, to better engage with them as well. Uh, and in better engaging, we're better able to serve the local community because, as Runeek uh, mentioned earlier, that engagement allows us to collect statistics on what people actually need. And so we can provide tailored targeted services uh, and make more efficient use of our, of our donations. You know, we were fortunate enough to have uh, a congregation that, that donates, like most Gurdwara, and uh, uh, we want to do the best we can with the, with the money, with the donations that we collect. Brilliant. So, so effectively, there is an opportunity to be imaginative, to be creative, to uh, channel those funds in a way that are more efficient. Um, I'm going to bring back uh, Captain Ramit here. So, I was talking to you. We were talking earlier on about this rundown of services. Um, no cooperative bank is necessarily going to invest in social systems, right? So, does that mean, in your view, that we should look to you know other religious institutions to supplement that? Uh, I'm not saying that's an excuse for government, but, you know, out of their own funds or borrowing funds um, to help prop up those services? Or should we be really pressurising as well politically to say that, look, you know, these are essential services with professionals that we need in place to be able to provide that um, and to work in, in conjunction? What's your view on that? Um, I, I do think a whole system approach is needed because this is not something which is impacting or affecting a society, a community, or a particular ethnic uh, group. It is being faced by everyone. I mean, statistics is like international, go anywhere, and we can look at mental health statistics. You know, um, suicides have been extremely high in India during this COVID period. Um, they have been high in Singapore. I've looked at a lot, lot of different places, and we're talking of very high suicide rates as well. Um, I think we do need a more collaborative approach or religious organizations. We cannot think that this is just a responsibility of a government organization or a school or a college. I think we need to take responsibility as well. We need to come together, create some kind of collaborative program. And if we can take it up to the government and have some funds released so that we can have qualified people in each religious organization who is equipped to deal with this kind of conversations, then we're adding additional layer of um, support that can be extended to people who need it. So um, we can create more tailored approaches to um, for mental health support because we know culture has a big impact, you know, and we do need a cultural understanding when we're talking of different mental health issues as well. So somebody who is come from a Sikh background or you know a Muslim background or Hindu background would have a very good understanding of the cultural issues that can impact somebody's thinking, somebody's, um, the, you know, the pressures that person could be going through. And these all differ from culture to culture. So to further train somebody who has that background, I think we're adding, we're making a more robust system support mechanisms here. And I think we should definitely reach out um, to organizations who can support us. And we do have to, I mean, um, I cannot, emphasize enough how important it is for us to all work together on this because we are talking about our next generation here um, and it becomes our yes it becomes yeah, our duty our ability to 
to have those support mechanisms and to ensure, as I said, you know, we don't shop when we need it. You have to keep those systems in place. We have to start talking about prevention now. We have to start talking about intervention now. This conversation needs to happen more openly. It cannot be left alone, you know, like, oh, I am going to face an issue and then I'm going to take some mental you know, help and then I can talk about it. This is a conversation that needs to happen on religious platforms, on social platforms, on educational platforms, you know, and political platforms. It cannot be ignored. Um, Absolutely. I, no, I, I was going to bring Ash in uh, because uh, he put his hand up. We haven't got one of those sophisticated systems where, you know, you suddenly get a flag up saying, hey, uh, but uh, Mukesh, you wanted to say something there. Yeah, well, I'm, and I think, I'm using uh, my things, electronic well, hand. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I was going to say to you, Mukesh, is that it's very difficult for a bank to look at a social uh, piece of investment and say, oh, well, that's really good. We should put some money into that because they're going to look at return on investment. They're going to look at the fact that although ultimately it makes people better, right, in terms of, you know, not necessarily curing them, um, but actually um, helps to invest in particular programs, it will eventually bring them back to the workforce, especially if they're going to drop off the edge. You know, um, I don't mean that literally. I meant in terms of like not be productive for a while. So it's really difficult for banks. I'll, I'll let you go first, Mukesh, and then I think uh, uh, Captain Ramit wants to come back in. Yeah. Right. Let, let's just clarify a little bit. Uh, a credit union is a cooperative, right? And if you think back to the history of, say, you know, not not for advertising, but the traditional building society. Building societies were created so that people could share money together to buy a house. Credit unions have always existed, is that people put money together to lend to each other without having to pay humongous interest rates. The cooperative, which, which we are part of, the credit unions, only lend to individuals. They do not lend to businesses. Okay, so let's make that very clear. So I'm chair of Thames Bank. And I'm also chair of a back of another organization called Credit Union Solutions, where we support the back office functions for four other credit unions. The important thing to remember is that we are trying to firstly help people to save, which is the most important thing, help them with money management. We're not debt advisors, but we can advise them in terms of good practices of how to save money. And then if they save uh, regularly, they can borrow at much lower rates. Can you imagine like uh, some when we did have Wonga, Wonga was charging 1200% and people were in perpetual debt. The Absolutely. difference- And they get, the they get into trouble for that as well. You know, they got into big time oh, they, trouble they, for they're big, they're yeah. big, big time issues because they haven't, they didn't do an affordability test. We are regulated by the FCA, the FSCS, everything. So I'm held accountable, this, as I said, the same as the chairman of Barclays Bank but I get no money for it. So, okay. well, but I, I was gonna, because of the word clever, yeah? I was gonna stop you there, because Renit wants to come back, and can you believe we've been talking uh, at length at this, 24 minutes. Uh, only got about <laughs> a minute or so left to go. So I'm gonna bring Renit back, okay. Captain Renit back, okay. and then if you could, uh, and then um, I'll leave the last word as before I say goodbye to uh, Rajvinda uh, to say, well, does that give him any inspiration for uh, doing more exciting projects, like, for example, DIY projects that we were talking about earlier on. So, uh, Captain Ramit, tell us, uh, I know you only got about 30 seconds. I was going to say, Mukesh, thank you so much for coming on the show, but I will thank you in a second. Uh, uh, Captain yeah. Ramit. I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to request all these people, our audience who are watching this program. I think when you're talking of transactions, one of the most transactions that we can talk is, as Nanak Saki has, you know, has talked when Guru Nanak Devji was given to by his father to go invest in something profitable and he decided to invest that in people to, you know, clothe and feed those who do not have food and those who are naked. I think right now the requirement of the society, what society needs, what people need is our Satcha Soda that we Sikhs need to go with. And I think that is the most profitable bargain that we can ever look into is how do we feed the hungry and how do we clothe those who do not have have you know are, are naked and when i say that that we're looking into well-being of people so if there are organizations out there who have branches who can contribute towards this cause i would urge them please look into it and please support those um charitable organizations like us who want to take an initiative 
and extend ourselves to give the support to our Sangha and wider community. Absolutely. I think uh, it's, it's food, but also service too as well. Um, Rajvinder, tell us, uh, what do you think? Do you think there's more opportunity now? Do you think there's uh, you know, a chance to be creative in the types of services I, that are provided? You know? I think very much so. Uh, and actually, the, the credit union idea that, that, that Mukesh is, has been advocating is, is an exciting opportunity from that perspective. One of the other issues that we face as a community is actually looking after the elderly within our own community and people in need, people, for example, who need help with DIY projects, people who have had medical issues and perhaps need to adapt their homes uh, and haven't been able to get uh, the, the, the appropriate resources from the local authorities because they haven't been adequately signposted. Uh, as a charity, as a group, we can help with that signposting and also perhaps put them in touch with the credit union and form our own credit union amongst Gurdwara to help fund that sort of work. Because as we know, uh, local authorities have limited budgets and if we can lend on a uh, on a needs basis rather than a commercial basis and and, and give them the, the funds to help make the improvements they need, um, then uh, so much the better. And of course, within our own community, we have plenty of people that uh, would be more than happy to donate their services to help make those improvements and, uh, and adaptations to homes. That's another exciting area that we can explore. That's great stuff. So I was going to say, Mukesh, thank you um, for your link just now. Thamesbank.org, I think it is your uh, organization. Um, thank you for uh, giving us a bit of best practice in that area. Uh, Captain Rooney, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know you're a very busy person, like everyone is. Uh, and also, uh, Reswinder, great to have you back. Keep uh, plugging in those uh, strategic ideas into the uh, Gurdwara Committee and uh, maybe one day we'll have our own medical centers and well-being centers and you know outreach programs that will continue to help not necessarily prop up the services, but lead the way in terms of uh, best practice in how to support people, uh, no matter what situation they are in life. So we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, thanks to my guests for all their time today. Vaikuji Gakansa, Vaikuji Gifate.